Hi, my name is Joan Walsh. I'm the Bertrand Chair of Ornithology at Mass Audubon, and welcome to our video blog, Today's Bird. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different from the other videos that we've made. We've been looking at the common birds that we're seeing at our feeders, and we noticed that four of the eight videos we've made so far are sparrows. This is typically a group that freaks people out, but we're pretty hopeful that you've been able to come along on this journey with us slowly, and now you're comfortable with many of the common sparrows at your feeder. Today we're gonna to be exploring one more sparrow. This is a bird that may be one of the most well-studied animals on the planet. Its unique social structure, which is genetically coded, has opened doors for researchers that make this bird really an incredible little fella. So, take time with us today to learn a little bit about the bird who sings the plaintive song, Poor Sam Peabody, 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 or Oh Canada, 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 whichever way you want to think about it. Welcome to today's video blog about white-throated sparrow. Welcome back. It's Evan Sibley again here to talk about white-throated sparrows, a common feeder bird during the winter in most of the state, but only breeding in the high elevation areas of Western Mass. These birds can be confusing to ID because they come in two varieties or morphs. All white throats do have white throats, thankfully, and yellow spots in front of their eyes. But some have especially bright white stripes and others have tan stripes. But what's the big deal, right? All sorts of birds have two different plumages, like Northern Cardinal. That is what early ornithologists thought as well. But these two morphs are not linked to the gender of the birds, like you might expect. Both morphs are equally made up of males and females. This alone is pretty interesting and unusual, but the rabbit hole goes further. Studies have found that there are consistent differences in breeding behavior from the different morphs. Regardless of gender, tan-striped birds are more protective of the nest and offspring and are monogamous, while white-striped birds are more territorial, have multiple mating partners, and sing more than tan stripes. Even the female white-striped birds sing. And this is where things get very unusual. Tan-striped birds mate almost exclusively with white-striped birds and vice versa. Opposites attract, and only opposites attract. And the young are an even mix of tan and white striped. So, the balance of tan to white striped birds is maintained over generations. But, this means that each white-throated sparrow can only mate with 25% of the population. A white striped female needs a tan striped male, for example. This effectively leaves white-throated sparrows with four sexes. That's one species of bird with four possible breeding combinations. But in a way, it all makes sense, because duties of successfully raising young could be best accomplished with a pair that includes a white stripe and a tan stripe. One will protect the young, while the other protects the territory, etc. These behavioral differences, however, do not hold true in the winter, where a bird of either stripe color can be dominant over another. Now comes the part of the video where I briefly tell you who did the research to come to these incredible discoveries that I've been telling you about so far. And I just want you to brace yourself, because there's some amazing names coming up. The complex and unique system we've been talking about was only discovered in 1961 by J.K. Lowther. And then, five years later, the genetics were done by H.B. Thornycraft. Their work was enhanced by the work of Rusty Gosner and Elena Tuttle. To learn more about their work and the details of this phenomena, you can visit the article listed below at BioEd Online. It's really an amazing article, chock full of information, and we just can't do it justice in this short video. So, with that, we have covered all of our common feeder sparrows, which means it's time for a quick sparrow recap. We began with the dark-eyed junco, the tuxedoed snowbird. Then we went to the song sparrow with the dark central spot on its breast. We looked next to the fox sparrow, the chunky foxy red guys that pass through in the fall and spring. And last week we covered the sweet little chipping sparrow with its brick red hat. And today we wrap things up with a look at the most complex of these, the white throated sparrow. We hope you feel you've learned a few things along the way and we'll see you next time. 
thanks so much for joining us today on Today's Bird, where we explored white-throated sparrow. For your homework for today, why not try and get some videos of tan-striped or white-striped birds at your feeder, now that you understand how important that signaling really is to their entire social structure. The other thing I really recommend is to follow the link to the article that we mentioned in the center part of the video. This has been a joy to do research on this bird, and I learned a lot. And I really think that you'll learn a tremendous amount by reading that article. So take care of yourself, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.